Welcome everyone and thanks for coming. It's a great day and we're going to be able to say some wonderful things about some wonderful people today. Again, UMass just won by 40. We're going to have a big influx of people I think that were still at the game. Just a few comments before I get started. I'm nervous. Uh, I'm not a very good public speaker, but I do the best that I can. And I know that you're not very good at public speaking either from the six phone calls I got from the people last night that said they weren't coming today if they had to speak. So bear with me if you could. And second, just a reminder, I went to Frontier. I don't have the benefit of this education to work with. <laughs> also, when you give a mic to an Irishman, you're going to hear a song probably. However, that's only if it's after 5 o'clock at night. So if we don't get started here, you're going to have to listen to me sing. Father, the invocation, please. Father Sean O'Connor. Let us pray. O oh God, source of all we have and are, we thank you for your gifts of grace and generosity given to so many of our neighbors, past and present. Grant that we may find in their words and deeds inspiration and strength so that we may imitate their goodness and virtue in our lives in the future. This we ask of you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much, Father. We'd like to now call on Fred Luddy, if he could come up and have the history teacher to give us a summary of the Hadley history, Hopkins history. Father, <laughs> Father Luddy. <laughs> there is some truth to the Father Luddy bit. Um, some of it takes the form of having a daughter named Hadley. And um, she, like the town, is, uh, is attractive and uh, becoming more and more historical every, not hysterical, <laughs> that too, but uh, historical every day. This is a very special return for me and I'm honored to be welcomed uh, to, to enjoy it with you. I'm uh, not... Uh, binational, although I spent 16 months in Korea, some of them before coming rather directly to, to Hopkins. I'm, I guess you might say that I'm bi-communal in that um, there's still a fair amount of Amherst in me, uh, an old Amherst, and there's a lot of Hadley in me, which accounts for my being able to enjoy this, uh, this invitation. I'm old enough, and there's a risk to that, of course, because it means that I might carry on with what Mark Twain attributed to older speakers, and that is senile rapture. Uh, you'll be protected from that in a way that I'll describe to you in just a moment. But I, I did grow up as a, for a long time, wet behind the ears, Amherst lad, who wet behind the ears, partly because I remember the Great Flood of 1936, and uh, coming uh, towards Hadley, towards Hadley, you didn't go into Hadley at that particular point, and pausing at the ridge up there by Spruce Hill and seeing what was then clearly Lake Hadley. It was like a reenactment of the geological past that, that uh, was part of the early history of this, uh, of this area. But I, I uh, used to come over with my, my father and mother to visit the Keefs, who were from that Irish layer of, of, of Hadley. That's a whole historical layer, like a geological layer. Used to come over to, uh, 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 to see them, and I got my first sense of something special being here. Years later, when I came back from Korea, Hadley and Hopkins took me in. It was an odd time in the calendar. I was at a, at a 
odd point in, in life, but I did some substitute teaching in the good care of Helen Nash and Fred Reel and, and, um, and others, and gradually came to an eligibility to be a full-time teacher here and to have a, a relationship which has never been equaled or duplicated, and that was a relationship with the class who graduated from Hopkins in 1960, and several of them are in this room. It's a very, very special bit of treasure in, uh, in, in, in my life. But uh, I, I have some apprehension about going back to that, as I had apprehension when we came into the parking lot here and I, I, it took me back to a time when I had a 1952 Hillman. A 1952 Hillman was a little English car about the size of one of those Austins that they use for taxis. And I was very, very proud of it. I bought it from Cliff Buckholz over in Northampton for $695. Not bad. And uh, I parked it rather casually out there in the old, the old gym. Uh, a lot, and I would come out after school and could not find it. Could not find my car. And I thought, well, it had rolled or something like that had happened to it. No, it had been lifted. Not in the sense of being completely stolen, but literally lifted uh, by strong young women of Hadley. <laughs> I have their names, Monica Drabeck, Marianne. Petrus and others, the, they're, they're forever marked in my memory in a very special kind of um, way, but it was a moving experience to, uh, 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 to, to say the least. You're protected here by another strong, a strong woman, Her name is Judy Luddy. She was fearful when we married in Kentucky that she would become Juddy Luddy or Judy Ludy, but she's really Judy Luddy. And she is back there in the corner, and if I carry on for very long about myself or even about what I'm here to carry on about, which is Hopkins uh, Academy, you will see her doing this, <laughs> this, you see. And um, that's my, uh, uh, that is added to my fear of, of women. When she, if you see her doing this, <laughs> It's an ongoing sort of thing. When you see her doing this, I want you just to, to just turn away from her and shout to me, more, more, more. <laughs> no, we have a deal. We have a deal. Some words now about Hopkins and the very special place it is. I had no sense when I used to ride by here as a, as a, as a growing lad, gradually drying out from behind the years that there was so much history here. Thanks to, uh, to uh, uh, Margaret Dwyer, thank, thanks, to, uh, thanks to Roland Ayers, who was from times past and who put together an early history of the Hopkins Fund and Hopkins Academy. I've schooled myself in this and have found it to be quite an extraordinary experience. I'm going to extend um, an invitation to you in just a moment towards the conclusion of my remarks, which is sort of an invitation within the invitation. You were invited here. I'm going to invite you to something much larger than that at the, at the end of my, uh, of my re remarks. I, I'm astounded by the history that is here. And as I made my way back into some of it, I came upon, for example, um, the interesting name of George Ashman, A-S-H-M-U-N. And who was George Ashman? Well, I found out who he was. And Stan Rosenberg and others here will appreciate this, that he was a, a congressman from Massachusetts. He was, he was uh, from the, I think at that time, what was the sixth, the sixth district. He was a member of the Whig Party that sort of rebelled against what the Whigs were feeling and thinking and planning at the time and became a, a Republican of another time and another, certainly of another generation. And it was Ashman who was the president of the Republican gathering in Chicago that nominated a, a long skinny guy named Abraham Lincoln to be president 
of the United States. It was Ashman who carried the message, wrote the letter, carried the message to Abraham Lincoln that, that declared that he was the choice of the party, this new young party, to be president of the United States. It was the same George Ashman who was at the White House on the evening of April 14, 1865. An infamous evening, for it was the evening of the Lincoln assassination. He was there, uh, a, few, a few other uh, Washington figures to deal with, uh, have some exchanges with the president who was just getting ready with Mrs. Lincoln to get into the carriage to go to Fort Theater. Why all this about George Ashman? Because George Ashman attended Hopkins Academy. As did others, you know, of, of some quite, uh, quite significant, significant distinction. And um, you, you, one of them might have been celebrated uh, uh, recently, and that would have been Levi Stockbridge. University has had a 150th anniversary. I found out too late that the granddaughter of Levi Stockbridge, I think granddaughter, was in town. Had I known it early, or I would have attempted to track her and to have her know where, where Grandfather Levi had gone to school. It is a rich, rich, rich history. I was in Oregon in 1950, 51. It was my first teaching experience out of Amherst College and before I went into the Army and, and uh, Korea. They were having their 100th anniversary in the state of Oregon. Big deal. They, they really had a time. They observed it, they celebrated it, and I thought of all those places back in New England, not thinking specifically of Hadley at the time, that were having anniversaries that were a little more grand than that. But they were making much of those hundred years. I've thought of that. I've thought of that ever since other, since other anniversaries have occurred after that, bicentennials, intercentenaries, and so on. And then I started thinking about Hopkins Academy and thought about a, a, a school named for a man who was born in 1600. In 1600, Galileo Galilei was 36 years old. If that'll help you science types to, to get a handle on, on this, this, this bit of history. It was, it was an extraordinarily long time ago. But it was Edward Hopkins, born in 1600, who came to Connecticut, came to the five times governor of Connecticut, came to, um, that's hard to be <laughs> today, especially in Connecticut or New Jersey, but in any case, um, there, there, he, there he was and befriended among others by a man named William Goodwin. And that's a name you see here occasionally as you drive slowly enough by, by the library. And I've come to appreciate the fact that Goodwin was an extraordinarily central figure in, in the, the founding, the funding of the Hopkins Fund from the estate of, of, uh, of Edward, Edward Hopkins. And uh, these figures are sprinkled through the history, but I was thinking in particular about what it must have been like to have been on the frontier of New England in 1659, 1600, and 64, think of a day like today, think of a day like yesterday. What was it like to have been here on that, that frontier? But they were here, and they were thinking about <clears throat> something that Henry Steele Cominger, the historian who spent many years in Amherst, whom I got to know a bit, used to love to talk about, and that was posterity. What do you care about those who are coming after you? What are you going to do? What are you going to do to honor your life and to, and to recognize them uh, for through the promise of their lives? Well, well, Edward Hopkins and through his trustee Goodwin did something for Hadley that's, you know, forever, 
forever marked marked here in that in in uh, in Hopkins in Hopkins Academy. My invitation my invitation is for you to consider possibly something that I've I've tried to think of the right metaphor for it and the best I've been able to do best I've been able to do is to come up with alphabet soup. Wow. Hopkins alphabet soup. I can get the Golumkis, I can get the pierogi, but I can't get the alphabet soup. Well, I want to take you there for just a moment as I begin to close today. I hope, I hope that you will be thinking about posterity. And one way I want to manifest the hope is to just give you what a hist history teacher inevitably do, along with other teachers, have a little pop quiz. And my pop quiz goes something like this. Uh, how many of you were here to be aware of and, and observe the, the 16, sorry about that, 1964 occasion of the 300th anniversary of Hopkins? How many of you were here for that one? And you're all sort of here today. How many of you expect to be here how many of you expect to be here in 2064 for the 400th anniversary of Hopkins? <laughs> Who am I kidding? What's my point from this pop quiz? This is your time. We don't get many chances to have a 50th anniversary of anything. Judy and I, we're rolling on to 52, I guess give or take a, a decade or so. <laughs> um, but, but how many 50th anniversaries do you get to observe? I knew a lady, I wrote a book with a lady down in Kentucky who was a frontier nurse, a pioneering nurse in the mountains of Kentucky who was born, who was born in 1893. Lived the entire, the entire 20th century and died in the year 2001 on, on, on the very day of 9-11. It was an ironic sort of death for this woman who had given her life to going into the wilderness and, 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 and delivering babies that, that, that this terrible tragedy had occurred on, uh, at the time of her death. But she lived through all those years. Not many of us get to do a couple of 50th anniversaries. This is ours, this is, this is yours. Alphabet soup, what's that got to do with 50th anniversaries? In the town of Hadley, there's a marvelous alphabet. And I got to learn my first days of teaching over here just how marvelous it was because I came across names that I had a, found a bit challenging. <laughs> Wonderful, glorious names like Pipshinsky, right? <laughs> Mokretsky. Zgrodnik. It took a while. It took a, a while, even though I'd gone to school with, uh, with Wysockis and, and Matuskos and others, it took a while to catch up with these real, real, uh, uh, real names, but I did. And I've been thinking about that lately because I've been thinking about how every one of those is in the alphabet that I'm thinking about. The people I think we should honor today as well as those in this room who are justly to be honored and, and, and recognized, are the people who raised these people, are the people who were their, their parents and their grandparents and their aunts and their uncles. There are some grand names here. It's not a, they're, they're, and, and they're, they're, they're those layers of history that are reflected in those names. I'm not going to call them to anybody's uh, uh, recognition or, 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 or even possible embarrassment. They're proud names. And they're names that I'm inviting, this is the invitation within the invitation, inviting you to, um, to, to honor and to do unto as, as, uh, as Hopkins and, and Goodwin and others afterwards came to do unto, unto the promise of, of Hadley. Such, such a marvelous place.
place, this little spot on the, uh, on the earth. Such a marvelous place. And I think of how much it is a matter of, of earth here, because I've known over the years many farmers who put their hands into that earth and made a, and made a garden, a garden of prosperity uh, for it. And I hope that I can get you, provoke you, invite you at least, to think about that and, and how you could look at some of these things that people are thinking about tearing down or not repairing or to think about other places where there's space, still some space, it's not always going to be there. Over here, I've stood out in the Hopkins playing fields and I've looked at this, I've squinted, cupped my eyes to see the possibilities. And I thought, boy, I'd like to get up in a helicopter and fly over this and see what's left of Hadley that can be pulled together, made into a center, a place called Hadley, something that people won't just drive through as part of Route 9. Hadley is more than part of Route 9. And on that, on that particular note, I, I, I invite you to, 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 to think about that and, and honor those who came before who worked so hard in that soil and in, and in other ways. And to, to, to think of your posterity and to honor them in this way. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Luddy. I'd like to now call up State Senator Stan Rosenberg and John Seibeck to offer a few words, please. Well, good afternoon and thank you for inviting us to be a part of this celebration of um, these outstanding uh, alums of this uh, great institution. Um, this Commonwealth was the birthplace of public education, the first public schools in America were here in Massachusetts. And this school may have been the first, but if it wasn't the first, it was one of the very first schools to be built and open to serve the people here in the community. It was understood in those days that if we were going to build a free market economy, if we were going to have a self-governing society, people needed to learn. People needed to have an education. People needed to understand the government and the economy that they were going to build and they needed to work together to build communities. So I want to congratulate the uh, people of Hadley going all the way back to 1664 who had the wisdom to create this school and to support it ever since. And um, the values of a community are clearly reflected in where they put their money, where they put their effort, where they put their support. And this community has stood behind this school generation after generation after generation, and frankly, century after century after century. I was a very young kid when this school was formed. <laughs> and at that time, I had a full head of hair. It was blonde. And I was six feet five inches tall. And uh, we're going to present, uh, uh, along with the official citations that are going to come from the school, citations from the uh, Massachusetts legislature and uh, I'm going to ask John if he'll say a few words and then we'll read you one as an example and uh, close our part of the uh, comments. You know, Stan, Stan pointed out an interesting factor and that is you know, the impact of the school in terms of providing individual, individuals with an education since 1664. But I think the important thing, and the reason people are being recognized today, is, is not just the education that they got, that they received here at Hopkins Academy, but really what they did with it. Uh, and, and the individuals who are being recognized today are being recognized for their contributions to this community and, and to other communities. Uh, and I think that's, that's the key. You know, it, was, it was a vision in 1664, and a vision that hasn't really changed. And, and, and I can tell you, uh, and Stan could certainly attest that there are dozens, dozens and dozens, hundreds of communities around this commonwealth that are envious of Hopkins Academy. They're envious in terms of your ability to educate the students in this community. They're envious of your ability to always be at the, you know, the top of the list on MCAS scores. They're envious of your ability to, to, to remain a community. 
Uh, and so I think it, it, it is telling and, and, and really appropriate to honor these outstanding alumni today, but also for the entire community to take pride in what you have at Hopkins Academy. Uh, and, and I hope that some of you will be here for the 700th anniversary in 350 years. Thank you. So, um, um, watching out for the taxpayer's pocketbook, we prepared uh, official citation, which is actually uh, at the heading, it says the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the House of Representatives, but it's also from the State Senate, because both John and I have signed these citations uh, to each of the awardees. And it says, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives and think and State Senate, offers the sincerest congratulations to, in this case, Eddie Adams, in recognition of your achievements as a distinguished Hopkins Academy alumni. So the entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune, continued success in all endeavors, given this 26th day of January 2014 to State House Boston by Robert DeLeo, Speaker, and offered by myself, State Representative, and Stan Rosenberg, State Senator. So it truly is a an honor. It's an honor, and uh, we just hope that uh, you will each enjoy having these in your possession, in your homes, in your offices, and recognize that this is the first and last free thing you're ever going to get from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Thank you very much. We also received from words from uh, uh, Congressman McGovern. I want to extend my sincerest congratulations on your 350th anniversary. As one of the oldest and proudest academic institution in our country, the history of Hopkins Academy reflects the great history of the education in America. As the namesake for Edward Hopkins, you are a key element in a proud tradition that led the foundation of some of, the, some of the nation's most storied schools and universities. Hopkins also played a key part in our collective history, graduating some of America's finest contributors. Since its inception in 1664, Hopkins has blazed the path of educational opportunities. But as rich as your history is, you have continued to lead as a modern public school, committed to giving each day every student access to a high quality education. As we continue to fulfill the great promise and principles of our country, including those laid down by Edward Hopkins, I know Hopkins Academy will continue to play a significant role. While much is going to be said this year about your history, always remember that the ongoing work in building the future generation leaders of Hadley still continues. Congratulations on a remarkable accomplishment, and here's to the next 350 years. Respectfully submitted, James McGovern, Congressman. I'd like to now introduce my co-hort in crime tonight, Mr. Joe Pilas. I'd now like to begin honoring some of the people that were here today, that we're here to honor. Eddie Adams, class of 1965. Eddie entered the U.S. Navy after graduation. In 1968, he lost his life in Vietnam while on patrol in the Mekong Valley. Eddie is memorialized on the Vietnam War Memorial wall in Washington, D.C., and is believed to be the only Hopkins alumni whose name is inscribed on that wall. In memory of Eddie, his family and the class of 1965 have set up a fund to purchase books each year for the Wallace R. Lane Memorial Library at Hopkins Academy. I'd like to ask that Mrs. Julia Adams, Eddie's mother, please come up and accept the Distinguished Alumni Certificate on behalf of her son. Julia. Chester T. Bai, Jr., class of 1958. <clears throat> Chester graduated valedictorian of his class. He was appointed by Massachusetts Congress to the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. 
He was the first to graduate from Hopkins Academy and attend the Naval Academy. He graduated from the Academy with a degree in engineering. After graduation, he chose to attend the U.S. Air Force. He was stationed for two years at Westover Air Force Base as a second lieutenant intelligence officer. He was then transfer transferred to Wiesbaden, Germany for four years. He also served there as an intelligence officer, briefing higher ranking officers during the Vietnam War. He was upgraded to captain while in Germany. He then was transferred to the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., where he retired. After serving in the military, he took a position in Connecticut Public Television as the Director of Development. He was in charge of receiving grants for many educational programs presented on public television. He then moved back to his hometown of Hadley. He was an active member in the American Legion and also an active member in the Young Men's Club. He loved sports and continued to watch Hopkins Academy baseball, basketball, and soccer. Unfortunately, he too died at age 46. I'd like to ask Diane Bach to please come forward, Diane Bai to please come forward and accept her award on his behalf. Mr. Norm Barstow, class of 1961. We're going in alphabetical order today. Uh, that's just because we think that's the way it should go. We give no credence to any of these. No one is more spectacular than anybody else. As a matter of fact, everybody's spectacular that we're talking about tonight. This afternoon, we started anyways. Norman Barstow, class of 1961. Before graduating from Hopkins Academy, Norm began working part-time at the assembly line at Hardig Industries in South Deerfield. While working, in, while working for the industries, Norm attended the University of Massachusetts and returned to his full-time employment as a packing engineer at Hardig Industries. Later, Norm was promoted to a senior packaging engineer, and then many years later, he was the director of packaging testing division in the technical consultant. He specialized in the packaging and transportation of sensitive military equipment and worked closely with the government inspectors at many of the military bases throughout the world. His career gave him the opportunity to travel to many exciting places, and Norm hopes someday to be able to visit those, some of those again, especially Australia. During his career, he authored articles for several professional packaging and shipping container magazines. Norm was the keynote speaker at seminars and symposiums throughout the packaging industry and served as a judge in many National Packaging Institute competitions. He held two major patents throughout his life, which still is going on. Didn't mean it sound like that, Norm. <laughs> In March of 2010, he was inducted to the National Institute Packaging and Handling and Logistics Engineer Hall of Fame, a ceremony in San Diego which, honored, which has only honored a few individuals to this time. Norman's lived 62 years of his 70 in the town of Hadley. Although he's traveled, worked many hours throughout his career, raised two children with his wife Janet, Norm still found time to, d to donate to the town of Hadley. He served on the Board of Trustees for a local bank, co-chaired Hadley Fire Department and Police Department Building Complex, co-chaired Hadley's 350th Parade Committee, delivers monthly meals at the Take and Eat program sponsored by the First Church of Hadley and Most Holy Redeemer in Hadley, serves on the Town Cemetery Committee, serves on the Board of Properties for the First Church, and serves with us on the 350th Anniversary Committee and is chair of the parade which is upcoming. Norm, please come forward and accept your award. John M. Callahan, class of 1954. Educated, Hopkins Academy, 1954. University of Notre Dame, fighting Irish. Yeah, okay. <laughs> 58. Boston College, doctor in 1962. Office of General Counsel, CIA. Assess Assistant U.S. Attorney, District of Massachusetts, private practice and district attorney for Northwestern District of Massachusetts. Bar Associate Activities, Massachusetts Bar Association, President, President-Elect, Treasurer and Secretary, Board of Delegates, Hampshire County Bar Association President, American Bar Association, Fellow Massachusetts Bar Foundation, 
and his other activities. John was a member of the commission uh, to review the anti-takeover laws, chaired the governor's panel to review police training programs, fellow American College of Trial Lawyers, director Porter Phelps Huntington House, trustee Hopkins Academy, past trustee Our Lady of Providence Children's Center, past member of Parish Council St. Teresa's, past religious educator of St. Teresa's in South Hadley. In 1994, John was the chair of the Massachusetts Bar Association Commission on Criminal Justice, Compensation, and was the author of the commission's report. Throughout the past 25 years, John has continued to speak on television, radio, and public forums on the administration of civil and criminal law justice. John, I really enjoyed summarizing your career, but I'd really like to read you the cover letter that accompanied uh, your application. I hope you'll accept this letter in support of the nomination of John Callahan in honor of the alumni recognition of Hopkins Academy. Attorney Callahan has dedicated his life to the service of our nation, state, and community. He served as district attorney for Franklin, Hampshire County, served as U.S. Attorney District of Massachusetts, served as attorney for the office and general counsel of the CIA, has proven he, his dedication to protecting and fostering the rights and freedoms that we all are fortunate to enjoy. Attorney Callahan is a lawyer's lawyer, providing leadership and attaining the highest values in the legal community, as exemplified by his presidency of the Massachusetts Bar Association and his tenure with the Massachusetts Chair. In 1961, President Kennedy lifted the fellow Americans by exhorting to us, ask not what you can do for your country, Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. As Hopkins Academy celebrates its 350 years of enabling the civil life of our commonwealth, I hope you will find this son of Hopkins, notorious and receiving of the alumni recognition for his lifelong dedication to the American ideal of justice. Respectfully submitted, Judge James Collins. A lot of talking, huh? We don't really want to leave anything out. Diane Karish Chokas, class of 1988, DKC to her peeps. When Diane was at Hopkins, she was quite an athlete. She participated in soccer and softball all through her years at Hopkins. After graduating, she attended Our Lady of Elms in Chicopee. There she continued to play soccer at college level, was a two-year team captain and the high scorer her senior year. Diane was the first student from Elms to be chosen Walt Disney World intern. This was a wonderful experience for her. Diane took the Disney experience, training and skills and gained onward, that gained her onward. She went on to graduate school at AIC, where she graduated with a Master in Arts, human, Arts degree in Human Research Development. She was then employed as a Plant and Human Resource Manager at Seleucia. As Diane's family grew, she chose to be a stay-at-home mother. She began her extensive community service by joining the Hadley Mothers Club and is an active member there. Serving as its secretary, she chairs, organizes, and coordinates the annual fundraisers that directly impact the elementary school students. She's a member of the Hadley PTO and has been in charge of coordinating the MCAS snack program. She also volunteers at the spring break, spring and fall book fairs. She's involved with Park and Recreation, has now been elected to the Park and Rec as a commissioner. She's very active in the Girl Scouts and recognized and was recognized as a cherished Girl Scout leader. Last year, Diane was awarded the appreciation pin for outstanding service to the Hadley unit for going above and beyond expectations. In 2012, Diane led 77 Girl Scouts on the trip of their young lives as they visited Washington, D.C., culminating in a meeting with Congressman Neal. Ladies and gentlemen, there's 40 other things that were, that were accomplishments that were outlined on the resume that was submitted to us, far more than we actually have time for. But I'd like to say, I'd like to at least uh, highlight four of them for you. She organized the Girl Scouts to collect, sort, and pack items for Hurricane Sandy relief. She collected donations for, the, for Haiti relief. She made snowflakes with the children of Newtown, Connecticut for their brand new school. And each year for the last six years, she's opened up her home 
uh, to a Bronx child to spend summers with her. These accomplishments struck a chord with the committee, not only because they are being done by Diane, but also because she's passed this along to the next generations of scout that she leads. Diane is the epitome of a true volunteer, and she gives her endlessly of her time, talent, and assets. Diane, if you please come up and accept your award. John Devine, Jr. <clears throat> John was a farmer, a politician, an elected town official, a mentor, and an advocate for strongly he felt an advocate for causes he felt strongly about. He demonstrated outstanding service to his communication and his profession every day. A lifetime farmer, John was one, John was one of the first landowners to preserve the Rich Hadley farmland through the Massachusetts APR program. Its purpose is to preserve and protect the agricultural land. Altogether, he's saved more than 175 acres that will forever be open land in Hadley. During the late 70s, John was instrumental in forming the Mass Co-op uh, Milk Producers Federation. A role of the co-op is to help market and promote and protect the state's milk products uh, producers' interest. John opened the farm to area students where they could come and study and acquire first-hand knowledge of a farm experience. He was a mentor to hundreds of area children who worked on the farm over the years. As a little league coach, he turned a hayfield into a baseball field and built his own backstop for it. He was a member of the planning board for 23 years. An ardent protector of the historical nature of our town, he earned the nickname Cupolo John after demanding, business, after demanding that building designs display a colonial exterior. John was elector of Oliver, Will, Oliver Smith Will in Hadley since 1972. In 1999, he became president of Smith Charities where he served until his death in, in 2013, a total of 41 years. John had a wonderful Irish wit, which served him well in his community and his outlook at life, and he spread it every day to each and every person he spoke to. I'd like to ask Sheila to please come forward and accept the award from my uncle John Devine. Mr. Bernie Drabeck, class of 1949. Educated at Hopkins Academy, graduated in 1949, Holy Cross BA, 1953, University of Massachusetts, 1957, University of Massachusetts, PhD, 19, I'm sorry, 1957 for University of Massachusetts, PhD, 1967, University of Cincinnati, postdoctorate, 1971, Wright State University postdoctorate 1972 and Dartmouth College summer of 1981. His first teaching assignments were in Leeds, South Hadley and Amherst. His longest employment was with Greenfield Community College where he began in 1962 as a member of the first faculty at GCC. While there he was a senior author and editor of two textbooks. He created the Pioneer Valley Studies program utilizing the resources of the Port of Phelps Huntington House, the Hadley Farm Museum and Historic Deerfield. He established a collection center for GCC for Conway resident Archibald McLeish in 1972. McLeish was a poet, a playwright, an essayist, and the editor of Fortune. He was a senior author for three of McLeish's books, and he was the editor of the Archibald McLeish Journal in 2005. Bernie is a dealer and collector and appraiser of antiques and collectibles, joined the Paperweight Collectors Association in 1972. He's active in many area music and theater events. He was the radio announcer for, announcer for WHMP at the Tricentenary Parade in 1959. While at Hopkins, he sang with the Glee Club. He was a piano soloist, a piano accompanist, and a player of trombone and the sousaphone in the band. And Bernie really wants you to know, he loved going to Hopkins. The atmosphere was congenial to a student growth and imparted great life's lessons. All interested in the skills, all the interest and skills that propelled my professional and personal achievements came from the life of that princely Victorian structure that no longer exists. 
that for me was the happiest exp educational experience of my life. Bernie, please come forward and accept your award. Mr. Pat Duffy, class of 1954. Pat was born in Hadley to parents who immigrated from Ireland. He often reflects on how the values instilled by his parents have shaped his life, family, faith, community, education, and work ethic. Upon graduation from Hopkins Academy in 1954, Patrick attended and graduated from Holy Cross, where he was a member of the Air Force ROTC program. In the fields of Hadley, where aircraft flew above, he set his sights on becoming a pilot. After graduating from Holy Cross and while awaiting entrance into the U.S. Air Force pilot training, Patrick returned to Hopkins Academy to teach Latin and math. This rewarding experience stayed with Patrick and would later lead him back to the classroom. Patrick was active military in the U.S. Air Force for five years during the Vietnam era, bringing him to Southeast Asia where he became a quality, where he became a highly decorated pilot, including the Vietnam Service Medal and the Legion of Merit. He continued his service of country in the Massachusetts Air Guard and the U.S. Air Force Reserves, retiring with the rank of Colonel after 29 years. Patrick's professional life began with New England Telephone, where he rose through the ranks, including the promote to promotion to the President of Verizon for all of New Hampshire. While balancing this telecommunications career and military career, he, owned both, he earned both an MBA from Babson College and his doctorate from the New England, Journal, New England School of Law. He ended his Verizon career and was appointed by the governor as a commissioner of administration and finance for the state of New Hampshire, where he introduced private sector innovations to state government. You want me to read that again? <laughs> Following the service to the state and government, Patrick established the P. Duffy Associates, a business consulting organization assisting small and medium-sized firms in the business development and planning. During his tenure in New Hampshire, Patrick served and continues to serve the community in many key roles. He served as chairman of the Manchester Airport Authority for 10 years, president of Courier Museum of Art as a board of trustee. Chairman of Optima Health, Chairman of the Board of Trustees at Notre Dame College, Chairman of the Bishop's Fund, Diocese of Manchester. He served as a member of the Broad University Whitmore School of Business. Served as public member and commissioner to the Institute of Higher Education, New England Association of Schools and Colleges for two terms. Served as the government's, governor's appointed council, state education and personal system task forces Leading, le leading to legislative changes. Serves on the board of directors for Wiggins Airport, awards and recognition, Greater Manchester Chamber of Commerce Citizen of the Year, New Hampshire Business Leader of the Year, University of New Hampshire Granite State Award for Outstanding Public Service, and Business Industry Associated Lifetime Achievement Award for leadership in civic organizations and contributions to the state of New Hampshire. In addition to Patrick's service endeavors, he also served for 12 years as guardian ad litem, representing children removed from homes for abuse and neglect. Patrick returned to the classroom and teaches business law, labor law, and a number of management courses. If Patrick were asked, he would readily say that he's most proud of it, what he's most proud of in his life are his children and his beloved four grandchildren. Family, faith, community, education and work ethic, all instilled on the farm and in the classrooms of Hadley, have woven into this man's remarkable life. If you could please come forward, Patrick. <laughs> 